this point in our career, it's like, you know, we either sink or we swim. And we absolutely can't release the same record again because we're just not those people anymore. I think this album is the first we've released where everyone has their own input on it. We all have different influences and we kind of wanted to channel that and start writing for ourselves. I don't want to be doing stuff just to fit into that or make that person happy. Or I want to be happy doing it as well. And we were just like, there are no rules really of what we're going to do. It's a side of us that people haven't seen. And that's, that's the freedom of this record. We drove down here and like, this is going to be insane. It's just countryside, it's just trees, lakes, rivers. And we pulled up and we were like, this looks insane. The setting of this studio, the machine shop out here in Texas is like incredible. Just being able to be outside all day and like so much natural light in the studio is such like a welcome thing. You normally you're like hidden away in like some back alley. I sold my studio in New Jersey and home and we bought these eight acres and this, the first thing we did was we built this building from scratch and it was really exciting for me because this is the first time I ever got to make a studio from ground up with all these little things I picked up along the way. Previously we've obviously we recorded the last album in LA, the previous one to that in Sheffield. We've always been near stuff and we've always been living separate to the studio and there's always been distractions, there's always been like this divide of you go home at night, you're done, you start again the next day, right? And so being here and being 10 feet away from the studio at all times, it's just got this real organic feel to it where you're constantly creating. Great content there. That's absolutely making the cut. T-shirt. I was trying to be sexy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this is the price you pay for sex appeal. Look how cute this. Half an hour. Fancy. How long did it take over there? I can't remember. <gasps> Fifteen minutes. Oh, you know what? Honestly. <laughs> <It's> good. <laughs> oh, pro. <laughs> She's loving it. She's gone mad. <laughs> Ma, give it soul. She's gone out. She's oh, gonna... no! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Did you film that? Instant yeah. face. Serious. Straight on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I got a funny feeling From the fire on the ceiling It's less than I'm down, oh so down Oh yeah, I'm thinking they were lying When they said I wouldn't feel a thing I'm calling out for help When I tracked drums before, it was me in one room, the engineer in the other room, and a glass screen between you, and you can't hear them talk until they hit the, the talk back button on the desk. So it's kind of hard to really get a vibe. And then, so you do a take and then it's like, ah, oh, how was that? And then like, everyone else is in the control room and then you can see him talking, but you can't hear him talking because he hasn't pushed the button. But Machine just sits in the same room. So he was sat like 10, 15 feet away from me. He had his in-ear monitors in, so he could hear everything that I was doing the same as me. And that works with my whole open concept thing that I like to do, which I would try to figure out in big studios, how I could get into the live room with the band. So I knew that would be work great for this too. And it just gets you way more excited and it just feels way more natural and like you're hanging out and like playing just to someone there rather than having that disconnect of having someone in another room. And because it's such a nice space and it's such an amazing location, it's not like it gets to the end of the day and you're like, oh, I'm sick of this, I can't wait to get back to like the Airbnb or whatever. Like, you're like, oh, cool, I get to stay here and wake up tomorrow and like do the exact same thing. So it's been amazing to like never really shut off. We've never stopped, which is tiring, but at the same time, 
we're here for four weeks, we might as well make use of the time and, and rest when we get home. You live and breathe it in a way, which is cool because like, it's around you the whole time. But if it ever gets like too much, you know, you've just been focused for hours and you're just like sort of feeling a bit like stressed or a bit down or whatever, you just literally go outside and it's like amazing weather and just like so much open land. And then you come back in like completely like fresh mentality, like ready to like crack on. We got the even, we got the outside lounge separate and we got the inside interactive lounge. Like even the lounge is not, doesn't have walls. The chill spot, like where we all hang out is literally just upstairs. So it's like, we're up there playing PlayStation, chilling, but we're always listening to what's going on down here. You can kind of hear what's going on in the room up there. So if things are being changed in there, you can hear it. And if you're like, oh, I'm not sure about that, you can just open the door and be like, yo, that didn't sound great. Or like, down here you can you can literally shout to each other so they'll be trying stuff down here and they'll just shout up like what do you guys think and we'll all just be like yeah good or nah let's try this and we'll all come back downstairs sit around here discuss it together we're all in the same room then we go back off and while they crack on it's just got this real organic feel to it where you're constantly creating you're constantly bouncing ideas off everyone because everyone's there at all times <laughs> I didn't see you there. That's perfect, mate. Oh! What's going on there then? We're just seeing if maybe. Nothing, get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> fuck off. Oh, can I go on your own vehicle then? What are you. What? Do you want to see a fucking penis? I'll show you one. Please do. Can I see a normal penis rather than a fucking penis? Oh, I pissed on my ass. <laughs> Everything's on the whole time. You can come in and play drums at 1 a.m. if you want. You can grab a guitar at any time, plug in and... So if there's like an overdub that needs to be done or whatever, or if it's like, oh, yo, let's try this out, you can just sit down and do it. It's not like you've got to wait an hour for someone to like mess about plugging everything in, or you've got to like take the drums down because you need that space for something else. It's like, if there's something that needs to be done and you want to try something out, everything's just good to go. Like, you can just get it done, which is sick. We've spent quite a lot of time, not only trying to get like a good sound, but like a different sound. There's Kempers, which are insane, and you can plug in and you can get what, any amp you want, and they're gonna be recorded amazingly, and you're gonna sound great. That's like someone else's sound, and like not we're gonna try and be like completely original and like do our own thing. We wanted to just experiment and like, well, what can we get? Like, what can we do? One of the, like, the sick things we did, we had this old Fender Twin and we put it through a old Marshall Celestian cab and then we just like cranked the Fender Twin, obviously didn't use the speaker in the Twin. And then we like, put through the, uh, some of the Warsaw Autos overdrived and there's this super cool one called like, 385, which is based off a old um, tube projector, which cranked that as well and it just sounds like this super like saturated, saggy, like just in your face, but like kind of like really cool and interesting. And The absolute dark horse the album was this guy. Walk in. He's like, yeah, you gotta use this in the album. I'm like, you're kidding me. Jackson. I was like, nah, not about it. So sick. So I literally tracked everything on this. So this is the Fender Jazz Elite American, whatever order of words they sell it in. Um, the head I used is over here. It was upstairs when we were tracking with it, but it's the TC Electronic Blacksmith. It sounds amazing. It's all like solid state and it's kind of got like a tube emulator and um, compressor built into it. So this is kind of just the the path up to the caravan and down from the caravan to where we eat, cook in the lean-to. Um, yeah, he sort of built this big barn and decked it all out with kind of like an outdoor kitchen stuff. These are his dog houses. Inside of these, he has like the cabs isolated and mic'd up so you can sort of tweak them and they're in their own place. Dog toys, 
for the dogs. This is our shower. It's kind of nice. It's like in Texas weather, it, it kind of works quite well. We all just come out here and shower outside. It doesn't look pretty, but genuinely, it's pretty good. <laughs> the door doesn't shut very well. We got bottom bunk, pretty good spot, although the window gets cold. That's your spot right now. Top bunk, kind of cool, but you got this uh, overhang, so you get a little bit stuck and it's hot up there. This is the master suite. This is where I am at the moment, which is a very good time because I can close the door and everyone fucks off. Um, Grayscale were in here just before us and that band fucks because this was left in the drawer. So I don't know whose it is, but one of you, well done for practicing safe sex. Just, just done my morning poo. Nice. We've gone fucking insane. <laughs> Machine made the most sense for us because we are so tired of the same sound. We could have gone with another producer, we could have gone with someone, you know, in the scene, and we could have ended up with, a, I think, a great album, but the thing is, like, we wanted an album that sounded like nothing else. When we spoke to him, it was like, this guy got what we really needed to do. He was like, we need to find your Romisms which is like the things that make you roam and exaggerate them. But he's done, he's like, he's done everything. Like he's done metal records, he's done pop punk records, he's done like punk rock, he's done like insane stuff. His whole process is like, well, there is no process and that's what made it great because we, you know, we said to him like, what's your process? And he's like, fuck that, I don't have a process. Like every band is different. Why would I put them through the same ringer and then end up with a very similar sounding album? Which like to some people is scary because you know, you hear X producer and it's like very noticeably them, but we wanted something that was very noticeably us. The band will come in here, he'll hear the music and um, act accordingly. Like I, I've done three records here so far, this is my third, and uh, it, everyone has been different. What's unusual about Rome is uh, I think they're one of the first bands I've ever produced that I hadn't previously met in person and seen play live. That's a big thing for me. So there was an initial time in pre-production really still trying to figure out who the band are and the story of, of the record and the story of the production. I like to sort of have a concept. And I get that a lot from just meeting bands. It's not even a musical thing, just talking about music and seeing them live and seeing who's connecting and why, and, and it makes for a lot of decisions in how we approach making a record. The pre-production process wasn't so much about, all right, let's take these songs apart, what's not good, what's good. It was more about him getting the picture for the album and going, cool, this is what we're gonna do with it. This is how we're gonna produce it. It's been very constant, and especially the first three weeks. The first three weeks we were like, we came in, we did pre-pro, and every time we finished a song, he'd be like, right, let's track drums for it. So he'd just put Miles straight on the kit, track the drums for that song. So we do a song, we play it, work it all out, kind of like demo it, be like, oh, what are we doing here, what are we doing there? And then straight away, because everything's set up, Machine would be like, right, let's track the drums. By the end of the first week, we did pre-pro and drums at the same time. We were like, is this like a normal thing? Do you do this every time? He goes, no, nah, this is the first time I've ever done this. I feel like what he does well and what he strives for is getting characteristics out of bands. So really showing what makes your band special. Like if you have these little like things about your band, like sort of making them more eccentric and then bringing them out of you so you can stand out more and be your own thing. Machine was just always happy. And that's what you want with someone that's going to be with you in this journey to the end of it. Is this guy's vibe to be 
like he is. You know, encouraging, always confident in what he's doing. A bit crazy, but that's a good thing, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, he, he sort of kept the crazy in for a while, it was good. And then it, it came out full force. <laughs> Tell them, G! Oh, oh yeah, you're a hugger, you're gonna explode! Boom! Ha 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 ha! Yes, I am! I'm going to explode in your face! <laughs> well, I'm a hand grenade! Ooh! Oh! Cool kid in the house! Cool kid in the house! That's all we got! Every time I got into the booth, I, was, I wasn't like, oh no, I'm, I'm not going to be able to sing good today or I won't be able to hit notes or stuff like that. It would be like, he'd hype you up. He'd be like, dude, you can do this. This is going to be amazing. He goes, when we're doing vocal takes, the best takes will probably like, are probably second to your sixth take because you're not really th focusing on the tuning as much. You're just focusing on how you're delivering it. And I want the attitude. And by if if you keep going on trying to figure out the tuning as much like really hard like I'm going to get this tuning right by the time you get the tuning so perfect you've lost all your character so he's looking for the character more than the tuning and I was like that's cool I've never really thought about it that way and he's like I've been doing this for like 30 years man <laughs> hearing back to what we've done was like oh that's that's definitely a character that 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 sounds like exaggerated me you know like when when tracking bass he's like shouting with excitement and like screaming along to the songs and like getting you so hyped on it and he just got the vibe and the message like like that it's like his mind's just going all the time and like they'll be tracking halfway through a song and they'll be like yo we need to do some crazy gang shouts in this bit here like out of nowhere just like a big Ooh, like kind of they'll just whack that in mid tracking session just What's going on then? I'm gonna attempt to do a fade, but I'm gonna use the the USB cable to uh, get my measurements. Is it even? It's as even as an iPhone cable tied around your head is gonna be. Disco Billy is sitting on his horse, he's drinking and smoking away. Disco Billy goes down to the ranch to feed his cows on cake. Yo, no, Disco Billy like this, I'd be loving this freaking way. Yo, Disco Billy, Disco Billy, Disco Billy everywhere. Last year we had like a taster of like things just not going well. It was to do with things that we couldn't really control. People that worked for us that were, you know, putting us to the bottom of the pile. Because of that, when people start to not care as much, it kind of had an effect on us as a band and as individuals as well. It felt like all our confidence was just getting shattered. A lot of people like to say a lot of stuff and fill your head with like all these big ideas and be like, this is gonna happen and and blah de blah de blah but then you realise like it's in their interest to fill you with hope and it's like a kind of realisation we came to they're like we keep getting all these people like try and work for us and do things for us but they're just never going to care as much as we do they're just kind of like on the outside kind of filling you with, with all these false hopes and good ideas and then like a few months later it doesn't materialise and it's like oh great so now we've got to rethink it I remember coming off the US tour that we did and actually thinking, is this, is this the end? I think with a lot of this sh like shit that we've had, a lot of people wouldn't have carried on. Oh yeah, you name it, we've been through it. Rome have done it all. Every, not all the hard shits, but every naive thing, like we've completed it, we ticked them all. If you like, think of a scenario, done it. Completed it. It's difficult doing anything creative or something that you care so much about because obviously you want to try and do everything 
that you can to make it work. And when it doesn't, and when you have those setbacks, it hits way harder than if you were just like saying a job that you didn't really actually have any personal investment in. I remember we would come off that tour and we knew like we should be writing, but I was like, Alex, I need to just not do anything for a while. I need to chill out. I need to see my friends, you know, do all that kind of stuff and just chill out like I'm not even in a band or anything like that, or I haven't even got to do anything. You know, taking a break from it really was like, you know, hang on actually, let, you know, if we, if we give up now, then what was the point in the first place? And so this was the time we were like, let's take control of it. Let's do what we want. Let's have no one to say what we can and can't do. Let's write what we want and see what comes out. And that way was the most real way we could have ever done it. I love you. I feel like the first bit does sound. I love you. 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 Oh. Yeah. Good boy. Your voice down, smile wide The only way to join the line Take a number, you'll be seen Just follow them This album was the first that we've kind of gone into it with a message With like an overall theme And it's made a huge difference Lyrically and sonically as well So I think that even if you don't like the band Like you should be able to take something from it and even if it doesn't translate in a musical sense, just understanding what we're trying to say is important to me. Maybe on the last album, that's kind of what we did. We put together a collection of 11 good, fun, catchy songs, but it's like, need to take it that step further and actually connect with people rather than people be like, oh, this is a cool tune, this is stuck in my head. It's like, it's actually got to connect with someone on a deeper level. Me and Alex sat down and we wrote this paragraph of just what we felt. The reality is like we came off of uh, a co-headline US tour and we just got to this point where we were like, we need to like make this exciting to us and to other people or there's no point us doing this. We need to make a statement because I think at, at one point we all lost belief in ourselves. We've had a lot of things set us back and we've had a lot of reasons to give up. So we were like, we all feel this way. So let's write these songs about this. And then it clicked and then we started writing these songs and they just, every time we were meeting up, we were like, I've got this another idea, I've got another idea. And it was like, shit, this is exciting. Like, this is something different. This is something that I haven't heard or haven't heard this kind of fresh take on. And it put this fire inside us again where we were like, no, we do love this and there is a reason we are here doing this. And as we wrote more and more and more, I look, I'm reading through the lyrics and I'm like, damn, this is like, this is like therapy. This is everything that's inside my head that I wasn't able to talk to myself about or anyone else about has just come out and it wasn't even intentional. It was just like you, I sit there and I read through the lyrics of certain songs. I mean, all of them really. And I'm like, damn, that's actually like what was kind of going on inside my head. And that's why I couldn't sleep. And that's why I felt like that. And after that, it was like, shit, I had some things to deal with. One, two, three, four. This old Billy is sitting on the porch, drinking and smoking away.